What's going on, guys? This is not your ordinary guy. No, no, no. This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Bunch of crunch army. Let me ask you this. Who are you inspiring today? Who are you leading today? Who are you influencing with positivity today? I want you to find people this week to influence, to inspire, man, with positive messages, all right? I want you guys to be examples. We're going to change this world one person at a time, and it's going to start with you, all right? So in this video, we're gonna be diving deep into three absolutely busted pro player loot pads. I'm talking about the past Mongrel and Mr. Savage used to dominate the Booga Cup, as well as what Liquid Stretch used to take home first place in July's DreamHack Finals. Though we're not only looking at their past, we're also gonna be peeking at the special pro looting strategies they use as well. Some of which I feel like, you know, 99% of us have probably never thought of. So I want you guys to get ready for this, man, because no matter if you play tournaments or only pub matches, anyone can use these loot paths to win. Are you ready for this? I know I am. But of course, you know, these aren't the only loot paths in the game, all right? There are thousands, but sometimes it can be tough to find one that just really fits, right? If that's what you're really having trouble with, hey, I want you to talk to one of our pro coaches at ProGuys.com, all right? They can help you guys find a game-winning loot route that really fits you and your play style. So you gotta check it out. Link is in the description. All right, bunch of crunch charm. It's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, it's time to scream this out. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. Let's get hyped. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. Woo! And let's get this going. Getting this going right now, let's first look at FaZe Mongrel, landing at Sweaty Sands. This path he used every single game to end up fifth place in the Booga Cup Finals, so you know it's definitely gotta be good. All right, so Mongrel, always on the roof of the hotel here, all right? He'll secure a weapon, open the ice freezer, then break the floor for his first chest. And what's so amazing about the hotel is that there's just chest after chest after chest, all in close proximity. You get kitted in no time. All right, but I want you to notice how Mongo shortens his looting time, not navigating through doors and stairs, but rather by breaking through floors and walls to reach the next chest. This aspect of this pathing is absolutely crucial if you want to land here. So try to memorize this specific route he takes, all right? Another thing that you might notice is how Mongo's harvesting furniture and all those fixtures. Now, you don't necessarily have to just farm all these, but considering how sweaty is typically contested, this does make for a safer way to get your mats, at least compared to, you know, going for trees and vehicles outside. Anyways, once Mongo's reached the bottom floor, he heads north toward the pool, breaking trees on the way, so he can just open his second ice freezer. Apart from all the loot and max mass that you can get, man, like these fish are probably the most significant reason to land that sweaty. If you're lucky, I mean, you can get multiple floppers and even slurp fish without wasting time finding a rod and then going to fish. From there, Mongo goes across the pool, gets another chest, and he heads to the dance hall building next to the hotel. Starting from the roof, he goes downstairs, he gets a chest, and again, he keeps harvesting all the metal and brick fixtures he sees. Though from here, and I mean like right here, Mongo breaks below, harvests some more, and then goes down into the garage for another chest. At this point, I mean Mongo pauses the farm a little. There aren't really too many sources of brick and sweaty, but this garage floor here can give a substantial amount. Also in this garage is the third ice freezer and an upgrade bench. And as for the bench, I mean, you know, Mongrel will always upgrade if he can take a weapon from blue to purple rarity. Those always give the biggest stat increase, so when he has a blue tack, he upgrades. After he's done in the garage, Mongrel heads to the dock, he secures another ice chest and also picks up a regular one on the left side. Finally, at this point, Mongo's loadout is done. All he really needs is brick, so he goes back to the pool to harvest some more before rotating out with the whirlpool to the north. Man, I mean, Mongo really knows his stuff, right? I mean, I probably don't have to say that, but if you want to learn more from Mongo and his secrets, you got to check out his exclusive course on ProGuys.com, recommended by some of the best players, all right? We have everything you need to improve, so you got to sign up as soon as you can. But now, I want to move to the next loot path, this one from the 200 IQ solo legend, Mr. Savage. Savage's spot is at the yacht, and in this match, there's an enemy who landed on the north side of the ship. So Savage is dropping at his preferred spot, this hole on the south side where he can just pick up two chests right away. Up ahead are two more chests, one you can quickly access by breaking the ceiling next to the tent, and one that's resting comfortably near the green screen. There's also Nam's box nearby that you can get, but the biggest draw of this loot path by far is the slurp kegs. There are five slurp kegs that you can pretty much guarantee with this drop, two here and three more just down the hall. 
So to conserve potions, remember to hit these to fill up your last 50 shields. Next to those slurp kegs are some more Noms boxes. From this room, exit to the right and place a cone to break the vent for another chest. Savage heads back into the last room to break the ceiling for another chest. And from here, and I mean like right here, you can actually head south to pick up two more chests near the front of the boat. But Savage wants to slay the enemy player that dropped with him. And oh my goodness, <laughs> just wait to see how he does this one. Savage goes into the restaurant here, leaves a chest unopened and uses it as bait. That was very smart, I'm taking that one. Anyways, Mr. Savage has the entire rest of the yacht to himself now. There's really, really not too much remaining since the opponent looted the north side. There are some fishing spots in the center you can hit, but Savage is heading to the containers. Over here, I mean, he's got a few more chests to open, including one in the orange container and one in this purple one. From the container, Savage heads to the front of the ship for one more chest and some metal. This spot seems to be a bit bugged and you can actually break the wall twice for well over 200 metal. After exiting the ship, Savage heads to the nearby island for a ton of brick and two more chests. One in the shack here and one in the water. And last but certainly not least, he finishes by hitting this unremarkable shack for two final chests. Now, in terms of rotating out, you could swim it down the river, but even better is the whirlpool to the east of the yacht. Usually, that's what you should take to get out of this spot, but in this match, Savage didn't because he was already in zone. Overall, I mean, this is actually one of the better solo spots out there in terms of mats, you know, loot, those slurp kegs, my favorite, and even mobility. It has almost everything going for it, right? Definitely one that you gotta try, guys, if you haven't. All right, lastly, let's look at the marvelous Misty Meadows Loop Path Liquid Stretch used to win $10,000 in last month's DreamHack event. All right, starting off, Stretch lands on the northmost house on the bigger half of Misty. First, picks up the roof chest, heads inside, goes to his left, and he breaks his way down. He gets the ammo crate, the noms box, and then this ammo crate outside. From here, and I mean like right here, he heads to the next building, breaking in while making sure his back is protected. Stretch gets the bottom floor chest, then heads upstairs, breaking the ceiling for a chest and clearing the attic for floor loot. From here, I mean he breaks out and heads next door. Same thing. He's going to break in here, then play some reverse ramps to cover him while he opens the chest and freezer. After that, Stretch crosses the street, heads inside, and he breaks the ceiling here for another chest. The back door takes Stretch to his next house, but first, he stops for a bit for Matt. At his next house, though, there's another chest and another ice freezer. So just like Mongrel's sweaty sands drop, you can often get a decent stack of fish here. Okay, so after Stretch is done with this house, he heads for the chest underneath the bridge, but afterward goes back toward the two houses he's already looted. And you might be asking here, like, wait, like, why didn't he just loot the entire thing before? Okay, our guess is that he's leaving early to secure the next house on his path before an opponent goes to get it first. And that makes sense, right? It's not like someone's going to just go pick up his leftover chest in the house that already looks looted, but they might go to the unlooted house and just take it before Stretch can. So by doing this, Stretch is effectively marking more territory and secure more loot. All right, once Stretch is done getting the loot he's left behind, you know what else he does? <laughs> he gets the loot others left behind as well. He visits the houses they looted and look, sometimes you don't get everything, right? But in this case, Stretch gets lucky, man, and he finds himself a free big pot and an otherwise fully looted zone. But what about Stretch's rotation out of Misty? All right, well, one of the advantages of such a loot dense location like Misty is that you don't really need much more loot after exiting. So what Stretch does is focus on gathering mats and positioning toward the dead side of the zone. For instance, zone pulls northeast, Stretch heads east up the mountain, checks for the henchman chest, then harvests the yellow bridge to fill up his metal all the way up. Lastly, from here, he heads toward a caddy corner to see what he can clean up. He'll look to third party any player still fighting and any leftover chest or vault loot he can just scoop up. All right, that's just one example of how you rotate, but overall guys, stretch loot pad here is so excellent, man. No matter if you wanna do well in tournaments or just rank up an arena. Now, one last point I wanna make is that sometimes you can't follow these exact paths. For instance, you may land at your first building only to find another player already in the next house you're supposed to hit. That happens all the time. And in those cases, you know, it's always safer to just diverge and just, you know, pick a house that isn't contested, at least if, you know, getting out the early game is your goal. 
All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I am your friend. I know I haven't met a lot of you guys, but man, I really am. I'm rooting for you guys. I'm cheering for you guys to be successful, not only in this game, but also in life, all right? Stay positive and spread positivity to everybody you come in contact with, all right? Keep eating that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. Hope you guys enjoyed the loot pass. If you did, there are always more killer tips and tricks over at ProGuys.com. Plus, daily group classes and more exciting features to come soon. We're so excited, man. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and comment which pro player loose path that you want to see us analyze next. All right, we'll see you soon. Peace.